ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to building a nation with team canada and today we are back to take a look at where we're at with the vancouver whitecaps if you remember back in the first episode we looked at uh, the beginning of the season it was march 1st i think or it was the beginning of march just before the very first game of major league soccer for the 2019 season and now we're already up until june we're getting nearer to the uh, summer transfer window but it hasn't quite appeared here yet i don't know that we're going to be incredibly active but right now we do have a, a few things going on let's um let's start of course with the competitions and see where we're at not so great currently we are 10th place in the western conference with vancouver after 16 games we've got five wins three draws eight losses negative eight goal differential only 18 points on the season now the board just wants us to be competitive so that's not a lot to ask you know it's uh i don't know exactly what competitive means i was watching one of the mls shows on youtube the other day and um one of the analysts on there says that in mls being competitive means making the playoffs so if that's the banner of being competitive we're a little ways off now we've got uh, still half the season left to go so making the playoffs is still attainable but we're just not there yet um board expectations for mls supporter shield is a little loftier mid table so mid table at this point means 12th position and we're down in 20th position so we've got a ways to go to reach 12th i mean we've got to catch catch way up now the one thing that has happened to us all season long is that we're behind in our number of games we've only played 16 games on the season and you know you look at lafc at the top of the league they're at 21 games played so we've got plenty of time and plenty of games to catch up on the rest of the league it's just we can't sort of squander that uh, those games in hand we have to we have to make something of it now the reason we're so behind is that uh our schedule has been a little strange and a little uh, a little different because of all the um, international competitions that have been going on a lot of our games have been deferred now since that opening 5-0 loss versus columbus that you unfortunately bore witness to uh we came back a little bit you know chicago we we should have won versus chicago but we had the they came back and tied it up and then we had three game losing streak and i decided to make some minor changes a few little minor tactical changes here and there and uh you know we started playing much better we we backed off the attack a little bit and you know we got a great 3-1 victory over san jose take a look at this Ardias with a goal uh tolosa with two goals including one in the 90 plus one to really salt it away so we played excellent there then we went on and we beat seattle we beat toronto fc which is one of our big rivals so that was outstanding i thought we were going to get the season rolling a little bit but then you know uh the mls season does what it usually does and it starts to give you injuries it starts to send you send guys out on international duty and uh you know what have you and we started to go inconsistent again we lost to houston 3-2 we lost in the 90th minute plus two so that's always heartbreaking when that happens and then two nil just crushing defeat to fc dallas we lost twice to fc dallas this year couldn't score on them at all in two games but then we had a bounce back game versus atlanta united we beat atlanta united of all teams 2-0 Ardias, yordi reyna with the goals um you know martinez got one back in the 84th minute but at that point it was all over 
and uh, you know we kind of settled a little bit on a rotation at that point. Uh, although in this match we we had Jordi Reyna out on the right hand side as you can see here, taking it wide and sending it forward to Ardias, its striker. And then here's Tebert working it up to the youngster Colin, out wide to the rookie Nerwinski. Reyna with his second goal, and that puts it away 2 0. Um, you know, the big change we made was bringing Suesta in, the Colombian, bringing him in at defensive midfielder. He's got the speed and the range to just play what we need him to play at the Segundo Valente role. Whereas, you know, some of our other guys, our older guys, basically Aris, he's just too slow. He doesn't have the range, the acceleration, any of that to, uh, to get around the field. He's basically a guy who has to stay relatively narrow and he just, he just gets beat with speed and athleticism. So we gotta, we just can't play him. We can't play him. We got to get rid of him at some point during the season. It's just, it's just not going to work out. So you know we've been sort of inconsistent since then. You know, loss, couple of draws, win, loss in our very last game that we played versus New England. Um, you know, New England goes up early. We get one back, and then they get one late, and then. There's nothing we can do. Now, we played a severely limited lineup in, in that game because we had so many players out on international duty, not just for the main Canada team, but for other teams, for the under-20 team. We had a ton of players. You know, we had some grayed-out players on the bench. We had two goalkeepers on the bench. So we were just playing just whoever we had left, we threw them in there, and we lost. Now, today we're going to be playing LA Galaxy. We'll get to that game in a minute. Now, before, I thought I'd go through the franchise and sort of talk about some stuff. So, we got the Academy. We've looked at the Academy before. We got some outstanding prospects. But as you'll see here, some of our prospects are missing. We have signed several of our youngsters up to the first team, which um, is sort of fortuitous. Just a couple of days ago, maybe you saw it out on Twitter, I posted it. There was a, a video from the Generation Adidas tournament that happened this summer or this spring uh, in the U.S. The GA, I forget what they call it. It's the GA tournament, whatever it is. Um, but the, the youth director from Atlanta United gave a presentation and they filmed it and put it up on YouTube where he talked about one of their top recruits, a guy who's, you know, 18 years old and how he got to the point where he's now challenging for the first team with Atlanta United and the plan that they used to get him there from when they identified him at the age of 14 or 15 and said, this kid He's got the potential to be an MLS quality player. How did we do? What were the steps? And like the first steps they did was they started, you know, at the age of 15 or 16, they started training him with the first team. You know, he wasn't playing necessarily games with the first team at that age, but he, they started him training with the first team. Um, and then shortly thereafter, he signed his first professional contract. He signed like a five-year deal, they said. Now, I don't know that we'll be able to sign any of these guys to a five-year deal because I don't know the FM will allow us to do that. You know, you, most of these guys would sign a backup contract or a reserve contract because we have to sign them to an MLS contract. So those are only two years and, and you can't do any more than two years. Now, if you want to sign him to a five-year deal, you'd have to sign him to a senior contract. And even then, I think the most you can get out of that is four years. So I don't think we can quite replicate that. But the one thing we can do is we can start signing some of these guys. And the guys that we don't sign, we can at least start training them 
with the first team because if we go to training there is a new option when it comes to units add remove reserve or youth team to the first team training so we've done that for a couple of guys let's see i know there's there's at least two guys that we did it with joe no not joe williams colin do they show up here or not hmm I don't know if they actually show up here, unfortunately. But we went here to add, remove, Whitecaps Academy, defensive unit. You know, and you can see you got choice of the guys who are there. And you can sign them up. Now, I'm not bringing everybody up at the moment because I feel our coaching staff is overworked at the moment. We don't have enough coaches. And I can't get the board to even, I can't even ask the board for more coaches. We only have, you know, this handful of coaches. We have two general coaches, one assistant coach, one fitness coach, two goalkeeper coaches. That's all we've got. It's not enough for the number of players that we have. If you look at training and we go to, what is it, coaches? Coach assignments. Yeah, so you see these are all the coaches that we have. And right now we got heavy workloads all over the place especially for tactical and technical training, which is what we need the most. You know, our defending tactical training is terrible. Now, we're good technically, but basically, like, uh, we got issues. We got, we got time issues when it comes to training. So if we add a bunch more youngsters that we need, we need training with, it's just, I don't, I feel like our workload is going to go up and the quality of training is just going to go down because everybody's, you know look at all these heavy 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 workloads so we got that issue we're working on it the board has no concerns currently about the size of the coaching staff unfortunately now maybe if we added a bunch of players then they would get concerned so maybe we could do it that way but i don't know that i didn't necessarily want to do that but anyway the academy we still have some pretty decent players that i want to bring up uh, i want to bring up lucic at some point you know, the right defender, 16 years old. We have one 17-year-old, uh, Ricardo, boy, Iodice, Iodice, I don't know how you pronounce that. Anyway, um, he's a pretty decent guy. He does only have 10 pace. He doesn't really have the physicals that I'm looking for, but he is a decent player. We could bring him up. Maybe maybe sell him. We got a lot of attacking midfielders currently, although Team Canada as a whole needs more attacking midfielders. So maybe if we could send this guy out and um, get him to play somewhere else, then he would get experience that way. Because I don't know that we're going to be able to give him any experience. So we got to worry about that. Same with a guy like Carlo Rosalind. I mean, we've already got a lot of left backs. I don't know that we need a third left back. So we should probably try to send him out somewhere. Uh, Stankovic, he's a left winger. We, we got to get him up so we can start training him as an attacking winger. But he's decent. He's got good pace and acceleration. He's got some decent physicals. His strength and jumping reach aren't great. But, you know, he's only 15 years old. So give him a break. Give him a break. And we can look at finances real quick before we get back to some of the youngsters. Finances are still fine. Twenty-two million in the bank, still thirty-one million dollar payroll. So we got all the finances in the world. Board, we are stable with them at fifty percent. This goes up and down with every win and every loss. You know, we were at fifty-eight percent before the last loss, and now we're back down to fifty. So, you know, uh, it is what it is at this point. It's just when you're a new coach and you're struggling a little bit, the board is a little wobbly. So ground network personnel staff we can't we can't increase anything at the moment so that's no good club wise i don't know what there would be really to look at here there's nothing of interest facilities are still pretty good you know great training facilities we got the training facility upgrade so that helps out quite a bit and uh you know great youth facilities so we're on track there transfers uh, okay 
Okay, so we are bringing in a young Scottish 17-year-old at some point. I kind of forgot about this guy. But yeah, we'll see what he, he can give to us. You know, he's just another recruit that we're going to bring in, another youngster. Who knows? I You know, Scotland and Canada are a little too close when it comes to quality of international team. So if we play this guy and he starts getting good, he'll probably get called up by Scotland before we ever have a chance to claim him. But you never know. You never know. Now we have made a trade... Hasn't showed up there, though. So let's take a look at transfer history and trades. There it is. We traded with Chicago for Raheem Edwards, a second-round draft pick. Not a huge trade. He's not a tremendous player, but he's okay. He's a guy who can fill in at the wings. He's got pace. He's got acceleration. And most importantly, he's currently not on the national team. He's 23 years old. He's probably not going to make the national team uh, you know, anytime soon. So we just needed some depth of players who aren't on any sort of national team, quite honestly, because everybody's getting called up, so we got issues. So Raheem Edwards, reserve-type player, Canadian. He can play with, for us in the Cups, the Canadian Cup, so that'll be fine. But that's really the only move that we made. Uh Let's see. Medical center. We haven't had much issues in the medical center. No problems. Training. Um, there are a couple guys that we need to look at here. We need to look at our youngsters for training and see how they're doing. So, you know, a lot of these guys have got called up for the under-20 squad, and that was cool. That was interesting to see. And you can start to see some of their values are starting to rise. Now, if you saw our first couple of videos, you saw that all of these guys were playing the same position. We had like three strikers and two left backs. So we, we called all those guys up. We signed them all to professional contracts, started getting them a couple of games here and there in the first team, and more importantly, training with the first team. So as you can see, they're starting to improve quite a bit. You can see here Darren Sr., Take a look at his training regimen, his development. We're currently training him as a right winger. Because like I said, we had three strikers. We don't want them all playing striker, so we're trying to move them around. So we're going to move Darren Sr. out to the right wing. He's got 15 dribbling. His crossing's improving. Determination is improving. He doesn't have any player traits. We might want to you know, talk about that at some point. I think it's a little too... Young at 16 years old to start talking about player traits, but we'll get there. You know, physicality, his physicals are going up. That's what you want to see. So he's he's improving. He's constantly unhappy with training, but, uh, you know, there's nothing we can do about that. We need, we need this guy to train. So Diego Hendricks up next. Another one of those strikers. We're training him at left wing. And as you can see, his training rating is very good. As was the previous guy. Look at his technicals, man. His technicals are booming right now. Everything is going up as he's training for the left wing. His mentals are also increasing across the board. And same with his physicals. He is really training hard and training well. So this is what you want to see when you're training these guys. Just improvement, improvement, improvement. Let's see what happens. Uh, we don't care about Daniil Henry. So next, Mario Ahmed. He's a guy training him at left back. Actually, I think we're training him at right back now that I think of it. Yeah, so we are training him at right back. As I mentioned, we had two left backs, so we don't need two left backs. Uh, he's got a training of 8.45. He's not quite improving as much. He has got some game time. So that's good, but he is still improving where it counts. Crossing is now up to 10. Tackling is up to 10. You know, determination is down a little bit, but he's got 16 determination as it is. So it's kind of hard for that to improve anyway. But yeah, he, he's, just, he's just looking pretty good. We look at our attribute changes here. You know, stamina has gone from 11.2 up to 11.4. Concentration, 11.8. 
what is this positioning 9.8 to 10 so you know it's it's slow going but he they they're all improving so that is outstanding then our final guy is Zlatkovic our final youngster that we signed to a professional contract and again he's improving his determination has gone up to 16 uh, his physicals were already pretty good so he's not improving tremendously when it comes to physicals Let me click on his his training he's still training well though 8.1 he's working more on his technicals i think and his mentals um, it would be nice to see a little bit more across the board he's training at left fullback he's focusing his additional on quickness he wanted to focus on quickness, so I was like, okay, fine. I mean, he's already decently quick. 15 acceleration, 12 pace is already pretty good for a fullback, but if he wants to get quicker, that's fine by me. Hopefully that's not in interfering with his overall training. We'll, we'll see about that. You know, we got a couple of other youngsters. Kevin Lemire, another one of our strikers. He's the guy that we're training as a striker. So we're training one guy left, one guy right, and Lemire up the middle because he's got 15 finishing and 12 composure already. He's improving a little bit. His technicals, mentals, we could use some more improvements, especially off the ball. You know, we've got him training in the final third, but it doesn't seem to be helping that much at the moment. Physicals are going up a little, which he needs. <clears throat> I would like to, you know, train him up quickness. But he doesn't want to train quickness at the moment. So I, I try not to make these guys angry, you know, with, with training because it just it just affects their mood and everybody's mood. So I try to keep them happy when they say, I don't want to do this training. I, I just find something else because they need training everywhere. Uh, and then another big recruit from last year, Simon Collin, the guy who's been getting some playing time as a 17-year-old. Physicals are going up. Mentals are going up a little bit. Vision has increased to 10. That's very important, as is his passing. Penalty taking up to a 2, which is, you know, great, I guess. He could use, again, more technical training. Let me check a look at his development here. He's training as a midfield attack. I think we could give him something else. Attacking movement, maybe. No, how about how about passing? Yeah, he's been unhappy with training, though he is training at an eight point two level. Um, I don't know. Everybody, everybody's unhappy with my training plans, so I don't know what to do about that. Uh, let's see some of our other young guys. You know, his brother Mark Collin is out on uh, loan currently see how he's doing he's not really improving that much out on loan unfortunately so we're you know, might bring him back at some point he's not really good enough to play for us but he's good enough to train with us so you know we might have to bring him back just for training dave berg 18 year old another guy who got called up to the under 20s he's not training very well at the moment you can see his He's got stats, attributes that are going down. So we got to figure out his training plan. Uh, let's see. Then we got a bunch of guys out on loan who we won't worry about at the moment. But as you can see, we got a ton of Canadians who are under 20. And we're training them all up, sending them out on loan, just trying to improve these guys. This is the next generation. This is going to be our next World Cup team right here so we got to uh, we got to do what we can all right uh is there anything else we need to look at squad dynamics our squad dynamics aren't great but they aren't terrible match cohesion is good locker room atmosphere currently is good leadership support very good hierarchy we got henry as our team leader so i guess our dynamics are just fine take a look at the coach no players oppose us 11 players support us including most of the team leaders so you know we're doing pretty good social groups are kind of all over the place i think it i think your team doesn't respond quite as well when they're broken up like this i think when they're all in one core group 
that's when your team really gels and solidifies. Happiness. Yordi Reyna is unhappy from the preseason when we tried to get rid of him. Um, does he want to leave still? I don't know. I guess he does. But it's not much we can do until the trade deadline anyway. If he does leave, that's I think that's fine. Um, yeah, he's already made his debut for Peru, so he's not going to be playing for Team Canada at any time. He's just there to sort of help Vancouver.